Moving to native app development. Last year, in November, the ArcGIS Runtime version 100 was released, and that was a very significant release for us. It's the runtime built in a whole new architecture. It unifies a lot of the functionality across all the different platforms that we support, all the different APIs that we have, have a unified conceptual model, as well as the functionality that they offer. It really complements the web GIS pattern of development. So you can build applications that extend the platform, as well as complement the platform. Now again, just like JavaScript, we have a number of releases this year. We have one in May, and that really rounds out the functionality for distributed GIS, completes the layer types for the web map support, adds related tables for editing applications, and it adds some capabilities to networking for closest facility and service areas that you can do all offline. Later on in the year, in November, we'll be releasing a version that we really refer to as the standalone application release. It's to support you building apps that are completely standalone from the platform, if you like, completely disconnected. ArcGIS Engine, map object style applications. They'll be fully supported with all the local content that you would want in November this year. Another initiative that we've had on the runtime team is working with what we call example apps. Example apps go further than the samples that you get in the SDK. And so what I'd like to do is to introduce Sandy from the Example Apps team, and she's going to take us through what Example Apps are and what they mean to you. Sandy. Thanks, Ewan. Part of building a great SDK is to include content that allows you, the developer, to learn best practices and patterns for using the runtime in ArcGIS. To this end, we've always included API samples, workflow samples, API reference, and guide documentation. However, something new we've been doing this year is building fully-fledged applications that weave together this information into compelling real-world applications showcasing ArcGIS. The first app is an extensible indoor routing app written in Xamarin for iOS. This mobile app runs offline using a, fully, using a mobile map package, an indoor network, and locators. We use this app to find employees, rooms, and conference centers on the Esri campus and route between indoor locations. One of the motivations for building this app was to help us understand how to improve the authoring process for indoor networks using ArcGIS. Be sure to check out our latest tool set for converting CAD files to indoor routable surfaces. The app begins with an overview of the Esri campus. Tapping on the Home button, I zoom quickly to my office, and because the information model is floor aware, I get a handy floor picker to use to toggle between layers. To get directions to my next meeting, I can start by tapping in the room name, and since I built this locator with suggest capabilities, I get a list of possible matches. And then tapping on the route button, I see it's a three minute walk. So building and demoing this app is really only the beginning. You can use this app as a starting place since all of the app source code and documentation is open source and available online at GitHub. Learn how to use the runtime with geocoding, mobile maps, and routing. You can even change the portal item ID and the portal item name in the app settings within the project to use your mobile map package, and you're on your way with your own indoor routing app. The second app I'd like to talk about is the EMU app for Android. This is an app we use to explore ocean conditions, and here we have a web map showing regions of the ocean sharing similar salinity, temperature, oxygen, and nutrient values. Moving the slider, I can see how these global patterns change with ocean depth. I can search for an ocean feature, or I can simply tap on the map and see details about that location. Download this open source application from GitHub, or get it on Google Play. In the repo, you'll find documentation about how we used ArcGIS Pro to optimize the data for the web map, and how we use the runtime to filter and query feature layers. While not everyone will want EMUs in their Android app, you may be interested in material design floating action buttons, 
bottom sheets, or snack bars. Or maybe you're interested in automated testing or MVP. So check out the source code. So that's it for example apps. They can be found on the developer site under the Featured Apps section of each of the SDKs. We've got plans for more apps like this, including offline workflows and data collection. We'd love to collaborate with you to ensure we're building what you need. So please come talk to us at the demo theaters and booths. Thanks. Back Thanks, Sandy. So we really think they will help you get started building your next runtime application. Now I'd like to transition to building desktop applications on top of ArcGIS Pro. You've always been able to customize the UI, add buttons to the ribbon, remove items from the ribbon, et cetera. With the .NET SDK, you've been able to create your own add-ins. So you've been able to add your own tools and uh, functionality and custom user experience. But there's been one very important thing missing. And that's the ability to take complete control of the application framework to make ArcGIS Pro your own application. With the 1.4 release in January this year, we've given you that ability using configurations. So what I'd like to do is introduce Chris Fox from the SDK team. And he's going to take us through some demonstrations of how you can use cut the configurations to take control of Pro. Chris. Thanks, Ewan. So new with the Pro SDK at 1.4 is an extensibility pattern called configurations. In this demo, I want to show you how you can customize the Pro startup experience and streamline its UI using configurations. So to help you get started, the SDK provides a new template called Manage Configuration. This template will create all the files you need to build a configuration. Uh, in, in addition to the standard files you get with an add-in, the project will contain some sample UI pages and a configuration manager class that you can use to override the application name, icon, splash screen, and start page. You can also use this class to change the UI by modifying or adding or removing elements. I'll show you how to do this shortly. For now, let's take a look at a configuration I built for my organization. Here's my Presto Energy configuration. Although it looks very different, this is ArcGIS Pro, running my custom start page and incorporating my organization's branding, colors, and logo. Because my users work in designated service areas, my start page only shows the areas that are assigned to the logged in user. Clicking one of the service areas opens the corresponding Pro project. In my configuration, I've added a home tab containing all the functionality my users need to complete their daily tasks. Adding a new tab is something you could do previously with an add-in. However, now I'm able to streamline the UI by removing every other tab from the ribbon, including those that are activated contextually. To restrict my users to their assigned service areas, I've also removed the new and open project buttons from the quick access toolbar. So with configurations, you can build focused applications using ArcGIS Pro by customizing the startup experience and only exposing the functionality relevant to your workflows. So let's take a look at how I built this configuration. Here's my configuration project in Visual Studio. I updated the splash screen to incorporate my organization's branding, as well as my start page to include my desired user experience. In my start page view model, I first get the logged in user. I'm then retrieving the service areas that are valid for that user. And finally, when the user selects one of those service areas, I find and open the corresponding Pro project. In my configuration DAML, the only difference from a standard add-in is here, where I'm declaring my configuration manager class. Other than that, the rest is the same. Here, I'm declaring my home tab, and it contains two groups. One group containing my custom buttons and tools, and the other is the out-of-the-box navigate group. In my configuration manager class, I start by overriding the application name and icon. In the onshow start page method, I'm constructing my start page view model, setting it as the data context for my user control, and returning the control to be displayed by the framework when the application starts. Similarly, in onshow splash screen, I'm returning my custom splash screen. 
For any aspect that I don't want to override, I can just return null or remove the override, and this would result in the default pro user experience. The final step is to update the UI to remove the unwanted ribbon tabs and buttons. To do that, I'm going to use the onUpdateDatabase method. So let me start the debugger to show you how that works. When Pro starts, it consolidates all the UI definitions from the application and any installed add-ins into a single XML database. This database defines all the tools, buttons, menus, tabs, et cetera, that are available in the Pro UI. So in this method, we have the opportunity to change the UI by, add a, by modifying, adding, or removing elements from the XML. So I'm going to find all the ribbon tab elements, with the exception of my configuration's home tab, and add them to a new collection. I'm then going to find three additional buttons and add them to the same collection. Finally, I'm going to loop through all the elements and remove each from the XML. So as I continue, my splash screen displays. My start page opens. I can select one of my service areas. And once again, we see my home tab with a very streamlined UI, exposing only the functionality relevant to my workflow. So with Pro, with the Pro SDK and configurations, you can now build focused applications using ArcGIS Pro. If you've been using ArcMap, or if you've been building solutions for ArcMap, now is the time to start leveraging the Pro SDK and, et and configurations when bu building solutions for ArcGIS Desktop. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Chris. <laughs> We're looking forward to seeing the applications that you build on top of ArcGIS Pro. So that's a very quick look at some of the tools that you can use to build your applications. And the truth is, we use exactly the same tools to build our applications.